You're a no good heartbreaker. You're a liar and you're a cheat. And we don't know why. We thought you'd get away with it. Mm -mm. The Georges keep telling us that you ain't no good. <laughs> but oh, oh, they know they're going to get rid of you if they could. <laughs> They've been uptight, yes they have, and they've been stuck like a loo, cause they ain't never, they ain't never, they ain't never, no, no, had a DA. As crooked as you. <laughs> All right, y'all. I got a chance to get that off because there were some different words. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to your family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. All right, y'all. Today... I want to talk about somebody who ain't no, I don't think is being talked about enough. And that is this DA <laughs> named Jackie Dam Johnson. Now, Jackie Johnson is a crook. Everybody was trying to tell the people that she wasn't no good. Okay? But she been getting away with murder, getting away with covering up, getting away with allowing cops to do stuff that reeked with her corruption. Um, listen to this. Tonight, a major development related to the murder case against three white men charged with killing a black man, Ahmaud Aubrey, while he was jogging last year in Brunswick. Well, today, a grand jury indicted the now former prosecutor in Brunswick, accusing her of not fulfilling her duty to arrest and charge the three suspects right away. She has denied any wrongdoing. John Sherrick is on that story for us tonight. It was the video that outraged the nation showing Ahmad Arbery, who is black, shot to death while jogging in Brunswick, leading to murder charges against three white men who are scheduled to go on trial next month. But investigators, including then-Brunswick DA Jackie Johnson, had that video months before it surfaced publicly. Why didn't she prosecute then? Now she's in trouble. A Glynn County grand jury just indicted Johnson for felony violation of oath of office and also for a misdemeanor. She's accused of ordering police not to arrest the suspected trigger man, Travis McMichael, who is the son of Greg McMichael, a longtime employee of the DA's office. It is not her job to tell them what to do or what not to do. Atlanta attorney and 11 Alive legal analyst Paige Pate says the indictment also accuses Johnson of breaking the law in the way that she then got the case transferred to another DA, Waycross DA George Barnhill. Barnhill had already concluded that the suspects had acted in self-defense and he did not intend to prosecute them. I think it was clear that she did want to keep the McMichaels from being charged and that by directing it to a DA who she thought would basically share the same idea as she had about the case would keep them from getting charged. Johnson emailed us last year, calling it all false accusations <laughs> to make excuses and ignore the problems at the Glynn County Police Department. We were not able to reach her for comment on the indictment against her. For more information on this case against Johnson and the men accused of killing... Well, as y'all can see, that was... A corrupt, that's what you call a corrupt. Now, I ain't done with her. I ain't done with her. I ain't done with her. Because first of all, um, there was red flags being raised about her before. Okay, and this is what happens in that good old boy network. A lot of times... Nobody wants, well, somebody's got the most power, of course, 
they supersede the ones with the lower power. And in this case, they got a damn corrupt district attorney. Oh, man. Which is one of the most dangerous things in the world. That's why I said all these small town um, departments need to be turned upside down. And all these, to my infrastructure, all these systems need to be tore down. All these police departments and replaced with, with a system of justice, a different way of, of, uh, of policing people. Because this old way of doing what you're doing and you have yourself open to so much corruption. Oh, my God. That's you, you know, you, you just asking for, um, you just asking for a trouble. They're asking for trouble. You, you, because you can't bank on, uh, human beings to be moral. Now, here she got this position of power, and, um, she's a damn crook. She's a damn crook. You can't. It, it, it is impossible to um <sighs> it's impossible to trust somebody like this it's impossible to deal with somebody like this so it's it's, it's really difficult but I'm I'm gonna keep on talking about her because this she's gonna have a trial that's gonna come up pretty soon. And when it does, oh my God! I mean, hmm. I mean, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to replace some of this stuff because there is no way in hell, there is no way in hell, somebody this corrupt. And the only, I mean, it can happen anywhere and everywhere. So you got to do something about the whole system. You see what I'm saying? Because it's too easy for this crazy shit to be happening. All right. It, it's just, check this out. Shows us how other attorneys have raised red flags long before the Arbery homicide. Jackie Johnson got international attention as the top prosecutor for the Ahmad Arbery case, but she had been the district attorney in Southeast Georgia since 2010, when the governor of Georgia appointed her. During her 10 years in office, she was in charge of several high-profile cases, including some that are controversial. This cell phone video showing the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery caused outrage, coming out two months after Glynn County Police and then two District months. Attorney Jackie Johnson decided to not charge the three men who chased him down. That ended up putting other cases she worked under the microscope. <laughs> this 2010 video shows two Glynn County Police officers shooting and killing Caroline Small after she led them on a chase. Cops had her car pinned, and she was unarmed when they fired. Ugh. Johnson presented the officer-involved shootings to a grand jury, but defense attorney Bill Adkins told the I-Team she made several legal missteps. Johnson provided the officer's defense attorneys with evidence before she presented it to a grand jury. Uh, Johnson went before the grand jury without presenting an indictment, uh, and she allowed defense attorneys to participate in the grand jury hearing by asking questions. No charges were filed against the officers. She violated that. Uh, plainly, unequivocally. And there was no consequence. Other than the fact that two men went free. You see what One happens? One of the officers, Corey Sasser, would later become a fugitive on domestic abuse charges. And in 2018, he killed his estranged wife and another man before turning the gun on himself. Another lawyer who questioned Johnson's legal practices was the district's former chief public defender, Kevin Goff, who says there were violations long before the Arbery case. What about the thousands of other people who have been run through the criminal justice system uh, and the tens of thousands across the state? What's being done to make sure that these kinds of problems don't happen again? Don't happen again. So are you saying that you feel, in your opinion, that some defendants did not get a fair trial when Jackie Johnson was district attorney. I have no doubt that defendants did not get a fair trial. I have no doubt that people that were 
innocent uh, under the law, uh, went to jail. And, you know, the sad thing is, trying to figure out who they are is difficult. The two sparred frequently in court. Goff was the court-appointed defense in the 2013 case where two teens killed 13-month-old Antonio Santiago while his mother was pushing him in a stroller. Goff says Johnson's indictment shows his complaints for years had merit, especially since the former police chief was also indicted in a subsequent corruption case. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty damning indictment of the way law enforcement has been operating in, in Wynn County for, for some time. So, you know, it's troubling, and I'm sure the community is troubled by it. Johnson blamed the controversy over Arbery's death for her election defeat last year. Independent candidate Keith Higgins collected thousands of signatures to get on the ballot and won. He's now the district attorney. I'm Vic Michalucci, Channel 4, the local station. See, and that's why the Thank Republicans you, are trying to right now on change some stuff. The copy of the indictment against See. Jackie Johnson. Just look for the story on the homepage. Uh, they're trying their best to, um, um, you know, stop that because when you when when you begin to, uh, well, I guess you see just what voting in action does, and when voting with a purpose does, they got her ass up out of there. She's no longer the district attorney. She's been indicted now, so now she's going to have a trial. For, uh, and a lot of those cases that she did before got to be overturned because the bitch is rotten down to the core. Yeah, I called her a bitch. She's rotten to the core. And so, um, by the way, it, it didn't matter. This is regardless of color because the, the, the woman that she allowed the uh, police officer to shoot down like that and then a lot of officers to get away no charges that eventually ended up killing um, a woman and her um, a new boyfriend and then putting a gun on himself she was a white woman so she is just a dirty bag Okay, she was she's trying to protect her friend at all costs. She let this Travis McMichael dude sit there and know he all his credentials had expired. <laughs> all his credentials expired, and she's allowing him to work the job anyway. Tell me, oh, um, I'm embarrassed, but um, uh, 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 uh just overlook it. It's just an embarrassing mistake. These guys, that guy didn't have, that was Greg McMichael. He didn't have no proper certification. She let him work as a police officer. I mean, he, and the stuff that he, the training that he failed, he didn't do no use of force training. He didn't do no firearm qualification. All this stuff, she allowed her buddy uh, to work down the district attorney office uh, and then he became, um, uh, 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 what was he, uh, um, you know, a fake, I just call him a fake cop. Is that the best way to describe it? This is a damn shame. But what I wanted to expose was this Jackie person. Because her being under investigation turned out. To, uh, that she was a damn corrupt uh, person and she allowed her friends to get off. And then the worst thing about it is <laughs> all of it came back to haunt you. Uh-huh. It all came back to haunt her. Uh, this is one of her comments because she didn't do too many, as y'all know. Um, she's just pathetic. Yeah, speaking publicly about the case for the first time, she also told a Southeast Georgia radio station that she is the victim of retaliation. I was just horrified because that's so far from, from the truth. It's just a straight up lie. On the Butch and Bob radio show, WIFO in Southeast Georgia, Brunswick District Attorney Jackie Johnson says she never told local police not to make an arrest when 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery was shot and killed back in February. 
She was the first DA to handle the case and is accused of directing Glynn County police officers not to arrest Gregory and Travis McMichael, the father and son seen on video in the deadly confrontation with Arbery. Gregory McMichael once worked for Johnson as an investigator, and that's why Johnson says she knew she couldn't get involved. I did not talk to Glynn County Police that day. Um, I, I, um, one of my investigators contacted me and said he had heard something about there was a shooting in, in that neighborhood, and, and he may, and my investigator may be involved, or my former investigator. And I told the person that called me, I said, look, we cannot be involved in that. We cannot go out there. We cannot do anything. Johnson later recused herself and her office, giving the case to Wake Cross District Attorney George Barnhill, who also had to recuse himself after Arbery's mother discovered Barnhill's son worked for the Brunswick DA's office where Gregory McMichael worked. The radio DJ asked Johnson why give the case to Barnhill knowing about his conflict. And it being the nearest DA's office, I just wanted to be able to try to get them somebody initially um, to help them make it a Liar! I didn't expect Liar. or um, try to direct I bet you she had Trump support. other than Hey, will you go over and see if you can help? Them? Nobody Johnson lie like them. She believes they she lie like rules. As retaliation. Um, we've had some corruption issues in the Glen County Police Department, and my office has been um, at the forefront of trying to deal with some of that. Now she's throwing them under the bus. Georgia's Attorney General has asked the GBI to investigate both Johnson and Barnhill for misconduct. He wants to know why no one contacted his office before one DA gave the case to the next DA. You can listen to her full radio interview right now inside the story on newsforjax.com. As y'all can see, this is going to be something else. When the shit finish hitting the fan and they start overturning all those cases that she was involved with. Because uh, she's a... Uh, oof. <laughs> She's a corrupt one. She's a, she's a corrupt one. Lastly, let's listen to this right here, what they said. Oh, my God, this broad. Whether to pursue federal hate crime charges against Gregory and Travis McMichael. Meanwhile, a special prosecutor is now taking on the investigation. This is the fourth district attorney to be assigned the case since Arbery was shot and killed while running down a Brunswick street back in February. Today's news comes after Georgia's Attorney General asked for a federal investigation into the first two district attorneys who took on the case. Uh -huh. Both had ties to one of the men who was arrested last week and charged with felony murder. News for Jack's I-Team investigators, Two Derek months. Minor and Kelly it's Wiley, are for them to get arrested. looking into the latest twists and turns in this case. Kelly Wiley is joining us now live from outside. After the he was Lincoln passing County the video Kelly? around with their neighbors and friends. Uh, yeah, this all centers around one of the suspects, Gregory McMichael, one of the men charged with the murder. And he has ties to this district attorney's office here. He's the former investigator for this office. And the second DA that was assigned to Ahmaud Arbery's case, his son worked for this office. In a letter, the attorney general uh, Carr said he wanted the federal government to look into communications between the two of these offices about this case. The ball is moving quickly in the case of 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery after cell phone video showing a father and son shoot Arbery to death was released to the public. After two months of no arrest, release of the video has seemingly triggered the arrest of the two men seen in the video, a new special prosecutor out of Cobb County, and a request for a federal investigation into the two district attorneys mm. who first handled the case. Documents previously revealed the second district attorney, George Barnhill, advised officers the day after the shooting not to arrest Travis and Greg McMichael. In a letter to the Department of Justice, Georgia's attorney general said neither revealed to his office that the Waycross Circuit district attorney had already taken a role in the case in reviewing evidence and advising the Glynn County Police Department regarding whether to make an arrest on the case. Documents obtained by News for Jack show Brunswick District Attorney Jackie Johnson did not send a letter recusing herself until three days after she had District Attorney Barnhill advise officers. And the state had yet to even assign the case to George Barnhill. 
The letter also says the district attorney claimed he learned three or four weeks ago that his son, who's employed as a prosecutor where suspect Greg McMichael worked, had handled a prior prosecution of Ahmad Arbery and that Greg McMichael served as an investigator on that case. The state has now appointed Cobb County District Attorney Javette Holmes as a special prosecutor for mm. the case. Attorneys representing the estate of Ahmad call it a win. Mm -hmm. And we reached out to both district attorneys, both George Barnhill and Jackie Johnson. And Jackie Johnson's office did return a statement back to us. They said the decision by Georgia's Attorney General Chris Carr uh, to seek help in this investigation will bring full transparency. And they say that they welcome it. Uh, they also said there's no, a public don't. misconception no, about this case, this case due to false allegations against our office by those with an agenda. And coming up at six o'clock, we have more on this. Case, goes with an the agenda. history uh, behind this district attorney's office and the police office that oh, initially investigated Amon Arbery's uh, fatal shooting. You know, now, I want to know what y'all think about this former DA, Jackie Johnson. What do y'all think about her? How much time do y'all think? Somebody told me that they thought that um, uh, um, Jack's, uh, what's his name? Zach, the Zach story. He sh he should get twenty years. Um, I said that's a little extreme, don't you think? You know, maybe three of maybe three for the way he beat that girl up because he needs some time to think a little bit. Uh, but of course, he'll probably get out. You know, on good conduct. But I wouldn't want to see him do thirty and twenty you know, years. That should be reserved. For somebody like this district attorney, these these two of them, Barnhill and Jackie Johnson, that's who I would consider that much time for. Not no damn year. Not with corruption, because the corruption that y'all do, y'all let people get their lives taken away from them with no remorse. Y'all don't y'all act like these people don't have loved ones and people that love them and cared about them and families and children or wives. You know. For you to allow that, and what's done to the in the dark, my mom used to always tell me, will definitely come to the light. Now you let those that cop get away with shooting that woman in the car, um, and you didn't charge the guys with murder. You cheated before the grand jury. You cheated. You covered up. You did all kinds of crazy stuff in that particular case. Be sure your sins will find you out. So now look what happened. You let it go on and then people like that not punish you gonna slip up. Cause now you about to be held accountable and so is the McMichaels. So something that y'all should have been held a long time ago. Accountable. I'm glad that you've been indicted. I would have thrown a book at your raggedy ass. And you never, ever, ever hold a job in any kind of government, state government, or anything like that ever again. You can't be trusted. And people bear need to be following her. So she don't show up in some other uh, county, in some other district attorney, someplace else, to keep continuing on her uh, racist, um, cruel tactics against humanity. She need to be sentenced. She need to be uh, dealt with and given some serious time. I don't know. That's just my opinion. What y'all think? Please let me know. Leave your comment below. I'll see you in the next video.